My name is Queen. Um, I'm actually uh, four, 45 years old, um, if I'm allowed to say that, with lots of grey on my head. Um, I have a, a restaurant cafe in the city centre of Liverpool, selling African and Caribbean food and some English food, such as breakfast. And it was based on this uh, desire uh, that I had to do something of my own. And I felt that that was the only thing I could comfortably do without um, having to ask for a lot of expertise in it. But however, it didn't turn out as I thought because cooking at home and cooking for the public, they are two different, you know, domains. In Queenie's, Queenie's Cuisine on Bowl Street, if you come in there um, to dine with us, our food is not really very hot. We don't we don't cook food hot. I believe that um, food has to taste good and it has to be edible. There is no point making food chilly hot and people can't eat it and appreciate it. I don't believe in it. I believe in food that you can eat it and you still leave something in your palate. My food is not doctored in any way. I just cook home cooked food as I will cook at home. That's how I cook it there. And for me, if you walk in and ask the different food that is there, sometimes it look foreign, but when we, when you when you explain to you the ingredients in it, it's just everyday food. But it's just a combination of it and the name attached to it that might be different. But the most popular dish in the house is jollof rice and lamb stew. If we're serving the food, we have a pot of homemade chili, which we give to complement. So if you want it hot, then you add that and make it hot. But you do have people that are a bit kind of, you know, um, hard to please, that wants the chili in the food. But we have to say to them, sorry, because we're cooking for the public, that is not possible. It's not for everybody, but um, we have to actually just, you know, break this myth of African food is hot. It isn't hot. It's just delicious. Um, I have three children and the children all grew up in a restaurant. Um, sometimes it's, it's funny and um, I'm really happy that I had customers that never really paid attention to details like that. Although I was quite conscious, you know, of of like walking into the restaurant and I'll see their books all over the table and you know the train is splashed out there. Sometimes it was embarrassing but you know I just had to say well it's just part of life. But just looking back it just goes to show that you know that sometimes you don't really have to take life too seriously because we never know how the next moment is going to be. And for them to have that opportunity to be in a work situation with me and at the same time still carry on with their own life, you know, um, kind of was weird in, in a way, but kind of rewarding because I saw them grow up in spite of, you know, being away from home. And at the same time, I could help them with whatever problem that they had. I have lived in Liverpool for for 20 odd years. Okay, I came to Liverpool in 83. Was a student of then the Polytechnic. Um, and then I went over to the university. And then I worked and then I started the business. So I consider myself as a Liverpoolian, but although I don't have the accent, which is good. I'm not saying that the accent is not good. My children all have the accent, but I just have my own accent and, and I just get on with it. The best thing about Liverpool um, for me is the two football team, um, the Liverpool football and the Everton. For me, I cannot support either one of them because to me, they're just fantastic even though I'm not allowed to say it in certain quarters so I have to like watch what I say because I could be with the group of Evertonians so I just have to say I love Everton and when I'm in the group of Liverpoolian I just have to say I love Liverpool but at the end of the day I think it's, 
is the fact that you have these two great teams that they have to be love between them. They don't have to be animosity because it's all a game. And it's the same people of Liverpool. Hey, so so it's good to probably, you know, maybe have this thing to a certain limit and then just cut off and just take human beings as they, as they are. If you grow up in a, in, in, in a community whereby everything was in a certain way and is not there now, so you have to try and see whether you can get back to that. I think it's this thing of, you know, wanting excellence in, in certain things in life. You get to a certain age and you're really wanting things to go as it should be, not the other way. Because we all have our own selfish desires, you know, and it's either you, you, you do something to benefit the community or you don't, you know. And that's about it. It's choices that we make. As you grow up, even though you've got the money, even though you've got everything around you, there will be something missing in your life. And unless you start chasing after that thing, you will never be a complete person. And the only way you can have that is actually putting something back in the community. That's what I have come to know and I've come to believe. Is by doing something for humanity that you always have that completeness.